I'm feeling a kind of way, and this is the way I'm feeling. Kind of like... I'm in a mood. I'm in a mood, and I'm doing something that's unfair. The thing that I'm doing that's unfair is I feel it's unfair to ask music that you have not heard yet to do something particular. And I... I'm looking for this music to console me, to give me some relief. But I haven't heard the song. And that's unfair to go into a piece of music expecting something. You should just be open to what it does. But I'm being honest, that's what's up. The second piece of honesty is there's a gorgeous cat right here. Also watching. And so we're gonna watch together. And uh, I don't know if this is the right piece, because I've never heard it. But um, even though I'm not overly religious, I do love religious music and the majority of stuff that I studied back in the day. Vocal works is also religious. I think people taking uh, a spiritual belief or an idea and putting it into words with music I think is really powerful. But that doesn't mean this will necessarily be what I'm looking for. So keep an open mind, but hopefully I get what I want and you get what you want and let's go. Oh Lord my God. <laughs> I did, okay. <laughs> I didn't know she's gonna sing in that register. That's kind of awesome. She sounds like a, like a, like a guy from the 50s, 60s, 50s and 60s singing. When I in also wonder, consider all the words thy hand have made I see the stars I guess it already worked I guess it already worked I hear the rolling thunder Thy power through a house the universe display. It's nuts because she doesn't sing like that now. She sounds like she's she heard a recording and she's nailing like a version of a song she's heard. Because her vibrato is the same every time and it's perfect, but it's the same every time and nowadays her vibrato is not like that. Shall bow in humble adoration. Notice her voice is also good, even when her mouth is closed, like when it turns into like a hum. Um, I can't obviously no singer, but and they proclaim, My God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great the heart. It sounds like she's singing, forgive me if you're like overly, if this is offensive to you, but it sounds like she's actually singing like a love song. Then sing my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great 
Okay, now I'm relaxed. I feel so much better just hearing her voice uh, that I can actually say this. Obviously, you know, I'm from the South. I don't know if it's obvious. I'm from the South. We got a lot of conservative stuff going on. And a lot of times in religious places, you find conservative things going on. And so I've been in a lot of performances in churches. And oftentimes we'll get notes, not me as a soloist, me with like a, a choir or something. And we'll be doing our dress rehearsals or whatever, or performing in the space to kind of get an idea of how, you know, the space sounds, how long echoes take to travel, because that could affect the tempo, which you sing. And a lot of times the director or a pastor or preacher or priest will come in and go, can you dial it back a little bit on these parts? Like we get that it's passionate, but we want to keep it a little more spiritual than passionate and you'll get notes like that and um i feel like she's just going for it she's like maybe it's over the top for some people but it just feels it feels right <laughs> I remember those videos. Bye. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Um, just for like a, just obviously that's awesome. Her voice is awesome, but just makes me think all of a sudden about like how much time changes. Um, that if you, if you go back far enough in time, there was a point in time that they, that churches, Western music, um, Christian churches thought there should be no music in churches. And then there was a time where they had vocals only and, it was actually a big argument to get pianos and organs into it. Obviously, that's like a thousand years ago. But they were like, no, there should not be a piano because, um, or, or an organ or any instrument other than the voice because the only reason to have music in a church is to um, uplift the word of God, which is the actual text of God. And instruments cannot play words. Therefore, the instruments are a distraction from the actual word. So it actually took quite a while to get pianos and organs into a church. And what's really kind of interesting is there are some amazing composers in, oh, you're testing my history now, um, in the 14th to 15th century, 14th to 16th century, right around the, that, that point, you know, the 1300s, 12, with well, the late 1200s to like the 1500s, I'm thinking. Um, and this would be in probably france and england for sure not sure about the rest of europe um where they got really clever with their use of harmony and and just pure vocals no instruments and they actually had authority figures come in and go you're so fancy with your harmonies that it's now hard to understand the word itself and the most important thing is the word and so you can't you can't perform these pieces. If the audience, the, con the congregation, if the congregation can't clearly make out the words you're saying, then you're not serving religion, you're serving yourself. You're trying to make yourself and your group look good by the cleverness of your music. And you're not here for that. You're here to clearly transmit the text. And so any performance that makes it hard to understand the text is not welcome it's a, going down a, a page that kind of struck me especially like when you come to like really m super modern churches that have you know full string sections horn sections drummers bass players guitarists it's it's kind of neat how ideas change over time that uh now it's kind of viewed like anyone who's bringing energy to the church is bringing energy to god Right, and the more people we can have serving that function and doing a beautiful job of doing it is welcome because it's going to bring in uh, more people and it's going to strengthen the con congregation. And it's going to strengthen the ability to reach out into the community. But it's it's you know even things that for like a hundred years seem commonplace. It's like oh yeah, four hundred years ago, completely outlawed. Anyways, that's a uh, little brief music history lesson, and I might be getting some of it wrong. But please, if you're going to chastise me on my history, which I could be off on, please Google it first, because this, uh, this last week I've had a lot of people leave comments 
telling me I was like completely mistaken. And they said it so confidently that I actually thought I was 100% wrong. And then I went back and did some research and I was like, no, they just didn't look it up. So like a simple Google can sometimes check stuff. And by the way, if you want to know why I'm going to 13th century, I'm going to 13th century for um, the construction of Notre Dame. And um, their two main composers, Leonardo and Periton. Uh, then that's why I went to the 13th century. Of course, you go back further for Gregor Gregorian chant, like maybe, I don't know, 800 AD, 700 AD, something like that. Whatever. It's not a, it's not a competition. We're just watching music and hopefully uh, finding something useful in it.